Okay, so maybe this is how you would read this. You would go, okay, imagine a sphere whose radius r increases at a rate of 3 centimeters per second. Okay, I'll put that back in my mind. I don't think it's important yet. At what rate is the volume V of the sphere increasing when R equals 10 centimeters? And so think of this as kind of like, um, like uh, when you're trying to find the slope of a tangent line. Like it would always say, like, what is the slope of a tangent line at this value of X? But in this case, it's talking about a radius, and it's at saying at this value of R, okay? So let's start it out by just um, thinking about what we know. Do we know um, an equation here? Because I don't see anything up there. Is, there. is there an equation embedded in this problem? And the answer is yes. It's the volume of sphere. Okay? And if you didn't know, uh, you guys can look at your formula sheet or you guys can Google it. Okay? The volume of the sphere is V equals 4 over 3 times pi times r to the third power. So that's the volume of a, of a sphere. And now, I saw in this problem, it says, at what rate is the volume V increasing? So, at what rate is it increasing? Um, if you're trying to find the rate of change, you would take the derivative, right? So, let's take the derivative. If I took the derivative of this, I would be taking the derivative of V with respect to what? R. R. R right? Because that's our variable in our... In our formula. So when I do that, I drop the 3, I multiply as 3 times the 1 fourth, I'm sorry, times the 4 over 3, which is 4, and I get pi, and I get r squared. So this right here is the formula for our rate of change, but it's with respect to r. Now this is the part that's weird. There is another function here that's hidden, and we don't know what it is. There's another function, and it's called um, we'll call this function r. This r relates to this r. How do I know there's a function r? I know there's a function r because the first part says, imagine a sphere whose radius r increases at a rate. That's a rate of change right there. It increases at a rate of 3 centimeters per second. You know what that means? That means that there's, um, there's a derivative with respect to time that equals 3 centimeters per second. Now that kind of makes sense, okay? It's the derivative of the function r with respect to time, with respect to t. Because that's what this says. It says 3 centimeters per second, and second is t. That's your time. So I know this exists, which means this exists. What would that be? Just, just for, I mean, we don't need to know it, but... Just to satisfy our intellect, what could that function of R be? Like, what would that be? That function R. What, 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 I mean, whatever it is, I take the derivative of it, and it would give me that, right? What would it give me? Or, like, what function would give me the 3? 3R. Not, not 3R. You wouldn't want to say R. You would want to say T. Okay, so 3T. How do I know the variable is t? Well, because it's talking about time right here, right? So it's got to be a variable t, and plus it takes a derivative with respect to t, which means the independent variable for the r function is going to be t. Now, we're writing it like this with just an r. You could actually write this as r of t. Just like up here, this v right here, I can rewrite that. Instead of writing v, I can say v of r because that's the variable right but it's weird this r is like changing roles because right here for here it's the variable it's the independent variable for v but over here it's the function and t is the independent variable now that's okay now this is getting kind of weird your mind might feel all twisted now because you're like okay i don't see where he's going here um So this function right here, let, hold on, let's go back to this function. This function right here would give you that, right, if we took the derivative of it? Okay, but couldn't it also be like plus 1? Because if I take the derivative of that, won't it give me the same thing? Actually, it could be a 5, huh? Or it could be a negative 200. What's the derivative of negative 200? Nothing, right? Um, this is actually something we're going to work on later in life. We're going to work on something called the antiderivative. Okay, yeah, later in life, probably like another two months. 
<laughs> it's called the antiderivative. We do, when we do integrals, we do the antiderivative. In fact, what we would put here is you'd put a C. Because you would say, there's some constant there. I don't know what it is, but there's a constant there. But this doesn't really matter to you right now. We don't need to have an exact function right there. So what's the point, Mr. Patey? The point is this. I'm trying to show you guys that this R right here is a function. We have a function inside of a function. And when you have a function inside of a function, you're supposed to use the chain, chain rule. Okay, so let's rethink this then. When we uh, take the derivative of something that has a function inside of a function, we take the derivative of the outside function, and then we multiply it times the derivative of the inside function. What's my outside function? V. What's my inside function? So the in outside function is V. The inside function is R. Take the derivative of V. What, what is that? It's dV over dR, right? That's the derivative of V. And then we're supposed to multiply that times the derivative of R. How would you write the derivative of R? dR over dt. Huh. So we take the derivative of the outside function, and we multiply it times the derivative of the inside function. Why does this look so different, Mr. Patey? I know what the chain rule is. This looks different because we're using Leibniz nota notation instead of uh, Lagrange. or Because um, that's what we're, when we do F prime, that's Lagrange notation. Okay, So that's what we were using when we were learning the chain rule. This is also the chain rule. This is outside function, that's inside function. We multiply them together. Now what's kind of neat about Leibniz notation is that this notation kind of behaves like like regular fractions. But these aren't regular fractions. Like if we were to multiply regular fractions, what would you cancel out here? You can't cancel the drs, which is kind of what you're doing. Not really. You would get dv over dt. Like, they, you can't look at those that, like they are fractions, but they kind of act like fractions. Does that make sense? Like they're not real fractions, but they act like fractions. So, so this says, if you take the derivative of V and the derivative of R and multiply them together, you will get the rate at which is it, it is increasing. That, that's what it wants. It says, at what rate? It wants that from the beginning. So at what rate is this derivative increasing? Well, we, we would have to find the derivative at which the rate, or at which the volume is increasing, which is what they give us in the beginning, which is this, dr dt, 3 centimeters per second, and we'd also have to find the derivative of the outside function, which is dv over dr, which is kind of weird. So now I can write it like this technically, and you can kind of see, oh look, it kind of acts like fractions. You just cancel it out and you get your answer. So, what is uh, dv over dr? What is it? Or pi r squared. Now I could plug something in the r. What do I plug in the r? I plug in the 10 because it's, it's talking about at that r. I don't know what you said. What was funny? Can you tell me? Because I want to laugh. No? I said 3t plus t, and you were like 10. I was like, okay. All right. Um, and times uh, the 3. And that will give us our answer. So this would be 100. 100 times the 4 would be 400, and 400 times the 3 would be... Now that's um, centimeters cubed <laughs> per second. I kind of understand.